Good morning. I welcome you to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So good to be here. You know something must be up if we're here in the Palms as part of the prelude. A great tradition here at Our Saviors. It is Palm Sunday today and we have our palm branches and in a few moments we'll hear the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and uh, and bless these palm branches as we enter into this holy week. Uh, you know, because of the time we are in, uh, thank goodness at least we're able to gather together and worship together in person, but not processing in from outside. And it looks like it would have been really nice uh, for us to be outside this morning and coming in. But nonetheless, uh, whether we process or not, uh, it is on the Lord who we lean upon, and it is our ever faithful God who has been with us every step of the way during this pandemic and is with us here today as well. And so it's so good to have you here. A few announcements uh, to lift up uh, before we begin. And first of all, it is Holy Week, and so we have Holy Week services here at Our Saviors. This Thursday at 7 o'clock is Monday Thursday. Uh, you're welcome to come for that. It also will be live streamed on our YouTube channel, so you can look at it that way as well. And then on Good Friday, we have services at noon and 7 o'clock with the 12 o'clock noon service being live streamed online. And so those are available to you. For Easter, next Sunday, we have three services. Our sunrise service is at 7 o'clock, and it's going to be completely outside in the parking lot, and it's designed 
particularly for those who are not yet comfortable coming into the sanctuary for worship. It's going to be all out in the parking lot. People will remain in their cars. And we have an FM transmitter that will allow us to uh, read the lessons, the sermon, the music that Cheryl provides. We'll all be able to go through your car radio so you can listen that way and then communion given at the end. So that's at 7 o'clock on Easter Sunday. Then uh, at 8.30 and 10.15, we have our regular services here in the sanctuary. Now, uh, the last couple of weeks, we've had in the 40s at our early service and uh, in the 20s, and it looks like more than that here today in this service. And so we are requiring that you make a reservation if you plan on coming to Easter Sunday because the Rock County health uh, restrictions restrict us to just 50% capacity here in the building. That's why it's every other pew is roped off. And so we're, we're limiting it to 80 people uh, to each of those two services at 8.30 and 10.15. So if you can call the church or you can go online, there's a real simple form you can fill out there online. That'll let us know uh, if you are coming for Easter and which service uh, that would be. Um, also, want to be lifting up, it was a few weeks ago that our administrative assistant, Deanne Guile, uh, let us know that she's accepted a, a, a new job, actually doing what she's doing with us at her home congregation, which is St. Thomas Catholic Church uh, here in Beloit. She's very involved with her home parish, and, and uh, when this opportunity came, and talking with the folks over there, uh, uh, she wanted to, to grab this opportunity, and, and I don't blame her, although we're going to, to miss her because their gain is our loss. And so uh, she's been with us since 2014, and many of you have uh, had very pleasant encounters with her. She's helpful in so many ways. So if you would like to be able to express just your gratitude to her, the personnel committee uh, decided that we'll have a uh, a card box um, that'll be set out next Sunday uh, outside the doors right here. Uh, if you want to bring in a, 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 a farewell card, uh, just a way to express your prayers and your well wishes to her, you're welcome to do that. We'll be collecting those next Sunday. Her last day with us will be on Friday, April 9th. And then also, uh, we've gotten a couple applications in. The personnel committee is still looking for more applicants. So I don't know if you or, or someone you know might be interested in the position. Details and job description are available on the website, as well as an online uh, application form that you can fill out. Uh, just take a look at our website for more details. So get the word out about this opening. Otherwise, uh, the rest of the announcements uh, you can, can read for yourself. And so it's our tradition on Palm Sunday that we, we, we gather together with the story of Jesus' triumphal entry, uh, that story of Palm Sunday. And so I invite you to please rise if you're able, and Pastor Jason will lead us through that. Good morning. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. 
Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I invite you now as you are able to raise your palm branches high and you can keep them raised during the singing of our opening hymn as well. But we pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, 
that I may know how, I'm sorry, how to sustain the weary with the world. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above all, every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord from the book of Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. 
she has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may, I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written for of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> to dark Gethsemane, all who feel the tempter's power, your Redeemer's conflict see, watch with him one bitter hour, turn not from his griefs away, Learn from Jesus Christ to pray. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same thing. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi. And kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You are also with him, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And he went out into the courtyard, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And then Peter remembered that Jesus, what Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? 
See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. They, you know, he answered them. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. After flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. <laughs> Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard to the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns in a crowd, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they'd offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who, those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who, cru who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama, sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women, look, women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and of Solomon. These used to follow him and provided him for when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. <clears throat> when evening had come and since it was day of the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, 
Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that he had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone across the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mo Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Early hasten to the tomb where they laid his breathless clay. All his solitude and gloom who has taken him away. Christ is risen, he beats our eyes. Savior, teach us so to rise. And so this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us together confess the ancient faith of the church using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals. Those who prepare meals. All who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and 
with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is our typical pattern in worship that uh, before we receive the offering that we would share the peace with one another. This is grounded in Jesus' teachings. For in the Sermon on the Mount, he says that as you bring your offering to the temple, if you have a, have a division between a brother or sister, stop what you're doing and go and find healing. And so we pray, since we're unable to shake hands and share the peace with one another in that way, we pray for that ministry of reconciliation, that there be a commonality within community and throughout the whole world. And it is through Christ where that is possible. And so with that as our prayer, then we are able to give our offering. And the way that we're doing it now is there are offering plates that are near the entrance, and if you so choose, you're welcome to leave an offering as you leave today. And so let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Graciously grant us the peace of the Lord as we seek reconciliation and forgiveness with those we disagree. Accept our offerings as a practice that ties us into your reality among us, and accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation, receive from his nail-scarred hand. Eat of the bread of salvation. Drink of the blood of the Lamb. I invite you to please rise if you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and bring you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown, that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? My Lord should take frail flesh and die. Sometimes they strew his way and his sweet praises sing. Resounding all the day, Hosanna's to their King. Then crucify his all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry, and for his death they thirst and cry. They rise and needs will have my dear Lord made away. A murderer they say, the Prince of Life they slay. Yet cheerful he to suffering goes, that he his foes from fence might free, that he his foes from fence might free. Here might I stay and sing, no story so divine, never was love, dear King, never was grief like thine. This is my friend in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. I all my days could gladly spend. At this conclusion of our worship service, you are welcome as you leave to receive uh, Holy Communion, which comes to you in a, in a little packet that contains both the wafer and the grape juice, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And if there are members of your family, people in your home, uh, that you would like to bring an extra pack with, you're welcome to take extras as well. And we'll begin with the aisle to my left, who will receive communion 
uh, at this station, and then conclude down the middle aisle where you will receive communion from this station. And so, friends of Jesus, come now to the table of grace and mercy with joy in your heart. Receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, nourishment for your journey. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.